My name is Randall Barrett. I'm just like you. I'm just a normal person. I'm, I have some abilities, long story as to how I got those, that I can stand here and talk with you and that I can talk about technical things and talk to the commissioners and talk to the PUC. So I stuck my neck out. I'm not a politician. I don't want to be a politician. But my wife and I, <laughs> yeah, really, my wife and I are so passionate about this, and I will tell you why we're so passionate about it when, at the very beginning of this. And so we just stuck our necks out in this. We're not getting paid for this. We do accept donations. You can give a donation to Cindy or to myself to cover our expenses on this, but we're not getting paid. We're doing this out of love and of our, out of our conviction for what is right and wrong. And once I explain to you, if you don't already know, and many of you do, once I explain to you how egregious this is and what's happening, and unfortunately, the majority of people are totally unaware or don't care. But it's a really, really huge issue. So we do this out of love. Um, what happened was we were in the dark. We're pretty good researchers, and we know a lot about a lot of things that are going on in the country and in the world that are wrong. But we really were just not aware of this. I'd heard about it, but I honestly didn't know. And this has been going on for 10 years in our country. So this is not a brand new issue, but it just hit us, Oregon. And when it hit us, we just dove into the research. And it was so egregious that we just said, there's no way. We're not doing it. So we started working with other activist groups and started going around the state and looking for ways to fight this. So we'll talk about that and what, what the best outlook is for a successful way to win this and why we need to. So if I can, if I can ask you to hold your questions, I'm only going to speak for about a half hour. I know we started a little bit late. But um, then I'll, I'll answer as many questions as I can, and we'll, at 7.30 we'll wrap it up and I'll start putting tables up. So write down your questions if you have something based on what I'm saying, and then please feel free to ask me that when we get to that point. So to start off, all, you, all of you please, you met my wife Cindy on the way in, she's wonderful. I would not be doing this without her, okay? <laughs> so we have to take care of her. Um, what is a smart meter? I know most of you think you know, but let me cover a couple points that are maybe going to change your mind a little bit. One of the things that's going on here and around the country is they're using the RF harm, the microwave of, of radiation issue that we all are concerned about, about the harm that that causes. They're using that as a way to fool people. They're either taking full-blown smart meters and turning the RF transmitter off, or they give you a meter that doesn't have an RF transmitter, and then they're telling you you don't have a smart meter. That's a lie. A smart is, R R is radio frequency. Yeah, please ask me. If I use acronyms that you don't know, ask. Don't you can interrupt me on, on those things, please. Um, the radio frequency microwave is a huge range. Okay, it goes all over the map, and we'll talk about that when, yeah, probably in the question and answer area. But when everybody's so concerned and focused on that and not seeing the big picture, they put a meter on your home that's a full-blown smart meter that watches everything you do, it has two-way communication with the office still, even though it's not using RF microwaves, it has a, uh, all computerized meters with, with computerized uh, transistors and, and chips and capacitors and batteries, they are all a fire risk. They cannot handle surges and they can burn up internally, not hot sockets, not wiring, again we'll talk about that more, but just trust me, they are fooling everybody. A smart meter is a surveillance control device. And if you focus on the RF, you miss the picture. And it is important. We have to know about the RF harm. We have to be aware to protect our health. But when it comes to the fight, they're using that against us. And it's happening in lawsuit and in battle after battle in, the, in our country. People are trying to use that as a way to win. And it's like, the F, it's like fighting, when you're trying to fight the FCC, right? It takes forever to prove they're wrong. He tried to prove that tobacco caused cancer. It took 40 years. The government, the medical, and the corporations were all in cahoots to lie to us. So the trick is to find a way to fight this that protects the basic right that you feel in your gut. When someone says, well, it's just a little computer they put on the side of your house. They don't know the facts. Once you know what this is, and you see this as an invasion, and we're going to talk about that, that they are violating your basic rights that you have as a human to protect yourself, your family, and your home, and the government's giving them the license to get away with it. They're using mani legal manipulations. So, this smart meter, this electronic device, that doesn't just gather your power for a total, for the one month and that's it, that actually 
reads what you're doing on a regular basis, either hour by hour, every 15 minutes, whatever they claim, many of them go by the second, by the quarter of a second, by the tenth of a second, and that's the future of it. So let me throw that one on you right here. This is, this is the big lie that Pacific Power has done. They've come in late into the game. They claim that they waited, and they only brought in meters that were not harmful. They brought in meters that didn't have these dangers. Well, that's the lie. They're deceiving everybody by not putting the most invasive meters on first. But if we don't win on this, if we don't get the right to refuse these computers and get them off of our home, next week, next year, they're going to put on a meter that has 5G or has whatever they want in it. There's not a thing you can do about it. If we don't win this, they are going to put whatever they want in these things. You can't touch them. There is tampering laws that were never enacted to allow them to force a harmful device on your home, but that's what they're using them. You can't remove this harmful device off of your own home. That should, that should be against the law right there. But they're getting these devices on your home. They're forcing them on you because they have an agenda. And so I'm going to tell you what got it started, why it's where it's at, but then we're going to focus on why it's a violation on your home rights. So first let me give you some history. The push since 1996 with Bill Clinton signing the Telecommunications Act, when the President signed the bill in 2009, the um, impetus, or whatever they call it, you, you, know, you know the word, I can't remember the name, but it, it, the bill that pushed forward the smart grid throughout the whole country, $11 billion, well that right there tells you what the reason is they're pushing this, because they're getting money, they're getting rich by pushing these meters on us, and they have to do it. And there may even be, we haven't been able to prove it yet, but there may be fulfillment that, just like with other things, they have to reach a certain percentage of saturation to get that big payoff. So that's why they're lying and cheating and doing everything they can. The Eclara meter installers, they don't pay any attention. If you have a sign, they will, but if, otherwise, if you've opted out and they come to your home, they'll just change the meter. I get reports every day. Oh, we didn't know. They come back and they put a digital meter on. They won. The cheapest digital meter that Pacific Power is putting on that they say has no RF and doesn't have any spying on it has the ability and it has to be upgraded or have switches turned on that give it the PLC, that's the power line communication where they can communicate back and forth. There they go. They got their two-way communication. They can remotely upgrade your meter. They can, they can change the way it reads your power and gouge you. There's no way you can prove that it's not true. And we have people in the room here tonight that are getting horrendously high bills. Yes. And you can't prove that it's wrong because there's no mechanical reading. Our contract with the power company should be the controlling factor here. The PUC should not be making rulings that are illegal and giving the power company the monopoly, uh, the ability to, to force us to pay fines and to pay high power bills with no recourse. That should not be happening. We have a contract with the power company. Our contract was to have a mechanical meter that read our power once a month. And that was it. So we should have a legal basis for suing Pacific Power from a business standpoint. I never agreed to have this surveillance, but we're losing these battles. We have to sue the PUC. I'll tell you right now, that is the target. Now, Pacific Power will be involved in that suit. They will be adjoined to it. But the suit has to be with the PUC because what they're doing is, there's the Pacific Power is saying, well, we're only doing what the PUC told us. The Public Utilities Commission, Oregon Public Utility Commission, sets the rules, and we're just doing what they, and I believe me, I've been at meetings with these people all over the state, and they say the same lie over and over again. We're just doing what they told us. We have to follow their rules. Well, how much of a lie is that? You, Pacific Power, you submitted the application with all these lies on it. So you are a party to the, to the fraud. And then the PUC stamps it and says, oh yeah, this is all good. We're just going to charge you people over here and we're going to ignore the expenses over here on the other side. And we're going to explain that in a minute. You'll get the picture. So we should have a legal basis for many ways to sue them, but they're failing because the, the, the judges and the corporations just run you out of money, and they don't have the money to if talk in Texas, Naperville, Illinois, all over the place. They don't have the money to keep appealing it and get it to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, would it be accepted by the U.S. Supreme Court? They only accept a small percentage of cases. I believe they would, and I'll, t and I'll tell you why. But it's, it's a, um, that's the only place we're going to win. That's my point. You may get lucky, maybe in some state court will win, and then they'll appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. You can bet on that. So my gut tells me, just like the, the case in California where they invaded the guy's home with infrared and it got overturned by the Supreme Court, just like the case where they were trying to get the GPS data from our phones illegally, from our, our cell phone carriers, that our privacy and our invasion of our home 
has been established by the Supreme Court with correct rulings. We may debate some of the Supreme Court's rulings, but for the most part, 99% of their rulings have been based on the Constitution and have been correct. So what happens if we can get this in a legal case, if we can get attorneys that are pushing it, publicly paid attorneys, so we don't have to come up with the money. That's what we're working on statewide. That's why talking to our commissioners here and our city and all the other uh, counties and cities around the state and getting those attorneys that we're paying for, to, some of them are going to stand up and fight for us. It's just going to take time to get to them all. You get this thing pushed to the point where the Supreme Court says, okay, we've ruled that they can't go inside your home and look inside your home with infrared without a warrant, and we've ruled that your data is protected. Even Naperville agreed with that, that your data is protected by the Fourth Amendment. Nobody's ever brought to the Supreme Court whether or not they can, somebody else can force a computer on your home that can surveil you inside your home that's in their control and not on your control and you can't remove it. Do you have the right to reject computerization forced onto your home in the control of others? I believe that it's a momental, a momental case that I'm not saying it right. But it, it is one that I think would be groundbreaking and possibly could be accepted. But for us to get it there, we have to work hard in our activism statewide. And that's what Cindy and I are doing. We've got activists now in Astoria, up in Clatsop County. We've got some activists over in the area near Portland. And there's a group in Portland already fighting this. We just got linked up with them. So we just keep working out and getting our fingers out there to make more connections, to, to try and help people to see this. And even the, one of the local groups who's been working very hard against smart meters for a long time, they're finally fed up with trying to convince the PUC. They're finally fed up with trying to convince Pacific Power. And now they're talking about, let's sue the you-know-what out of the PUC. So we're getting to that point where people around the state are starting to see the futility of this. And in California, when they sued, the only thing they ever won was the right to an analog meter. They still have to pay opt-out fees. They were less than ours. But that's the best we've had nationwide is a win to have an analog meter. Are you kidding me? I would love to have that option here. I mean, I would be okay with that as even a small win. But for nationwide, that to be the only win, that's, that's, that's pretty upsetting. So what it's, this is not about is it's not about meter reading and eliminating meter readers. Most of you probably already know that. There are so many other ways for your power to be turned in that has no invasiveness on your home and only collects the monthly total at the end of the month. It's totally a ruse. It's a way to confuse people, and they keep focusing on that. So now I'm going to tell you why the PUC, the Oregon Public Utilities Commission, how they broke the law and why the opt-out fees are illegal. When they brought the application, Pacific Power did, to the PUC, they have, well, we have to read their meters, we have to change it if they want their digital meter, we have to come out and we have to charge them installation and removal costs to put that meter on, and we're going to have to charge them for all this. They never asked the question or presented them any information about what does it cost to read a smart meter. What does it cost to turn a person's power in with a smart meter? Well, they got to replace all those meters. That's a cost there, right? They got the installation and removal costs. They're not charging anybody for that. Only the people who refuse. So what the PUC did was they broke the law because their requirements legally are that they must base our charges on actual costs. And when they let the power company get away with giving them information that it hides the cost of the, of the people who are accepting the smart grid. And they're not showing them, and the, and, the, and the PUC doesn't ask, and doesn't want to know what those expenses are, because they can compare apples with oranges. Well, if it costs this much to have guys come out, and drive trucks, and read your, reader, read your meters, and turn that power in, we know what that costs. It was $3.1 million per year for Pacific Power's budget in Oregon, by the way. And Colleen Roberts and others, including myself, have done totals on what money they're getting now with the $36 per month. It was about $1.60 a month previously per person, per month, about $20, $20 a year. And now they're getting $36. And the numbers of people opting out are huge in some counties as this word's been getting out. So they're making a killing financially on this. That money that they were showing that they had to charge, we can't put the expense of reading your meters on these people, but they're hiding all of the expenses and all the costs of the smart grid, and they're off the charts. It's not just the removal and installation of a smart meter. It's the antennas they're putting up. 
Remember they said they're going to save money by, by, by letting go of employees for meter reading? You know they're hiring more people for the, to, up, to upgrade to the smart grid? They're really proud. Oh yeah, we're creating new jobs. So they're talking out of one side of their mouth and the other all the time. So they're totally and completely, the PUC is lying and hiding the expenses of the smart grid so they can target. It's called illegal discrimination. It's actually illegal. It's against their own, their own laws that they have to follow, Oregon laws. And it's discrimination. It's targeting a certain group who won't do what you want and penalizing them financially. Well, they got away with it pretty much in Jackson County. They rolled through here and hardly anybody stood up to them because people didn't know. They didn't know they were harmful. They didn't know that their bills were going to go up. They didn't know. They just, they just blindsided everybody. But we've been getting the word out. Other people are getting the word out. And as it goes across the state, more and more people are starting to cause a ruckus before they come in or as they're coming in. And we're seeing huge numbers opting out. So I wanted you to know how they broke the law. That was important because this is what I believe the legal case is going to be based on. is two things. Number one, the PUC flat out, the commissioners broke the law. They violated the statutes. They're required to, by cost to, co to not let people be charged unfairly, but by cost. The power company has, the utility has to provide them a cost basis for this is what it's going to cost to do this, and this is what it's going to cost to do this, and we can compare them. If we're going to separate what people are going to pay based on the type of meter they have. And they totally broke the law by ignoring and hiding those, and they are still hiding it to this day. And for any of you that want to know why the PUC was not challenged, it's because the laws that they're bound by do not require that they have public hearings on these important issues. Now, a hearing means the public can provide input and evidence. Then they have to legally consider that in their decision. But when, they don't, when they're not required to have hearings, it says in the law they may. Well, that needs to change. So they totally let them keep lying. Any time we go and talk there or submit evidence, they act like, oh, we really care. They toss, they toss it to the side. They're not legally required to enter that into legal um, decision that they're making. So they've totally been hiding it. So um, what was the other thing about the, the PUC? We'll get back on that. But the, the fact that they're um, using this deception and these lies to roll over the people to put a meter on their home that violates their rights, their Fourth Amendment rights to protect their home and privacy. And most of you, I think, will probably feel the same way I do. The privacy is one of the smaller issues. It's actually the fire danger and then the, the fact that how in the hell do they have the right to put a transmitter, like a cell phone, on my home that puts out high-powered bursts every few seconds all day long. And I have no right to say no and, and, and to not be penalized with the illegal charges. And that's why most people didn't didn't opt out because of the charges. And if those charges are illegal, as I claim, they can be proved in court that they are flat out illegal. They broke, they broke the law and it's discrimination both. It's not based on cost and it's targeting those that won't cooperate. And you can see what the picture we're building here is. We're trying to look for a legal case that won't be like tobacco science. We're looking for something that has concrete basis that these attorneys can look at us and say, you know, you guys are right. They broke the law, their own laws, and they are discriminating. And we can take them on that. And your Fourth Amendment rights do protect you from this, and they're being ignored and being shot down. Even in Naperville, the ruling did not save them. It just said that they are, the data collected by the power company is covered by the Fourth Amendment. They thought that was a win. Well, they still told the people there, the power company can still read your, your meter power every 15 minutes, and they can still force smart meters on, on you, and you don't have the right to digital meters. So it wasn't a win. We need a real win, one that says the Fourth Amendment protects your rights to protect your home, to not be monitored. And then they say, power company says, well, we're not sending out any of your personal data. Okay, well, that's a lie, too. They're just using all of your activities in your home, and they're going to collect all that, and they're going to sell that data, but it's not going to include any of your personal identifiable information. Can you go online, if you have a smart meter, can you go online and can you look at your account number and your name and look at your power usage and what's going on? So you can't tell me they don't have it associated. And specifically, our usage is specifically attached to our name and that any hacker or government can't get hold of that, that's BS. So they just, they're just they constantly lying and I've got a whole list of the lies that they tell. So just for a minute, we'll talk about this in the question and answer. The health issues are real. I can tell you what's going on with Cindy. I can tell you about a lady with an autistic child. I can tell you people that call us almost every day and they say, and we're talking about people who are on both sides of the political spectrum. There are people who absolutely believe this was true and it was wonderful and great, and the moment that thing got installed, they started getting sick. Ear ringing, headaches, all kinds of nauseous feelings. Yeah. 
So the, the health harm is real. Now, it doesn't affect everybody that, that quickly. About 15, 10 to 15% of the population seems to feel effects right away, that you're near that tipping point or you're sensitive to it. Um, but for the rest, if they think they're in the clear because they didn't immediately get sick from it, first of all, they probably don't realize that they're, they're having an issue with it because they don't associate it. But second, it's accumulative. So I want to tell you this. It's really hit home with me recently. When you stand out in the sun and you're not tanned like I'm not tanned, I have to watch my time in the sun because it's, a great, it's, it's accumulative. So the longer I'm out there in those UV rays, depending on the day, I'm, if I stay out too long, I'm going to get burned, right? I'm going to have a, a pay a price for that. Now, my skin can pigment. It can tan, and over time, I can become resistant to the burning so that I can stay out in the sun longer. But with RF, and we're talking about the 910 megahertz that comes out of our cell phones and out of the, the, one, the 910 megahertz that's coming out of the smart meter is a strong pulse. It's not a constant. It's like the difference of holding your hand on somebody or hitting them. And your body can't handle that impact. It's a high-powered pulse. That, that pulse that's slamming your body, your body cannot adjust to it. It can't grow, get pigment and, and start to, to adjust to that. So the damage is just accumulative. So if you get away from it for a while, you can start to heal, and when you get around it, you start to get harmed again. So it's just, you have, it's based on exposure and power and all that. Some homes have a harmonic problem where they just, the wires just really radiate harmonics over back and forth. And so some people have a much more serious situation because of their home. Other ones don't have it as bad. But these things that we're using, our cell phones, I use mine here. Some use them on sticks, they won't even hold them in their hand anymore. To be aware that these exposures are affecting our children in the schools. I know this is a big push throughout the... And it's important to know about RF harm. To understand that these long-term exposures and these pulses are causing serious health problems in people. It is true. Again, that's not the way we should be winning this legally, but people do need to know about it. It's important that they understand that there is a health effect from this. And if you're having health issues, we just finally turned off our last RF source in our home. We had a security system that used uh, wireless... Um, meet, uh, cameras, and we finally turned it off, and now Cindy's health problems are going away. So we need to know about the RF harm. We need to know about the microwave harm, but the frequency is huge. Well, now 5G is getting into the shorter frequencies, which are don't just pass through us like an AM radio signal. They actually stop at the low level of the skin, and they're very dangerous. So I know a lot about the science of RF harm, but like I say, that's not how we're going to win this. If you have questions in the Q and A, well, I'll answer them. But that's not how we're going to win this. The other thing is the fire danger. To me, this is the biggest one besides the fact that I know that to win this, we have to fight the Fourth Amendment. We have to fight the fact that it's invading our privacy because that's what the court recognizes. That's what we can win on. But for me, the fire danger is the big one. These things absolutely have been catching on fire and exploding and killing people all over the world. And they're still lying about it. And so if there is even this much chance that that meter could catch fire on your home, you absolutely, whether the homeowner or the person paying the power bill, and some even want to extend that to say anybody who's living in your home has the right to say, I don't want that there. Get it off. And we absolutely should have that right. And that's being denied us. And that's, that, that, that's going to end up in lawsuits. And the power companies are going to bail out. And the government's going to bail them out. There's going to be all kinds of... California, they just, uh, uh, PG&E just filed bankruptcy because of all the fire lawsuits. So this is, a, you know, not make-believe. This is the real, what's going on in our world. This is what we're up against. The only way we're going to win these days against this corrupt government and corrupt, and I'm not saying everybody in the government's corrupt. I'm saying the system has been corrupted so that it serves the corporations and took, took the power of the people away. The only way we can win this, and this is what's happening around the world, and we have some rights they don't have in other places in the world, but every, every win they're getting is because of a lawsuit. Mike Moore won against the tobacco companies, and he was the AG of Mississippi. He didn't get paid a dime out of that, and he won against them in a lawsuit. That's the only way to win these things, and it's sad. But that's the truth. And then the spine. This actually wraps into the fact, what is their goal? And I think we've already talked about it, but the fact that they want to put these meters on your home, that they can see what you're doing, they can control you. They can turn your power off and on from the office. And those little breakers that are in there, they're not designed to handle a load. So when you're, you're, your, power, your, your, your breaker's on on your house, when they pop those things on after they've turned them off, many of them have, have caught on fire because of the, the contact spark. Because you've got a big load. You've got air conditioner and a whole bunch of stuff ready to pop on. So the, the, the fact that these things are spying on you, that they're watching you, that they can turn that in, 
they can see when you're home, when you're not home. This is the this is what their goal is. Their goal, the government's goal, and the gov and not not so much the power company, but I do believe they're going to get rich selling the data. By the way, but that wasn't their goal. They're, the reason that the power company's doing it, and the reason that the um the oh by the way, I forgot to mention, our commissioners at the Public Utilities Commission are not elected like New Mexico's. New Mexico's are elected, they actually let the public have a hearing where they got evidence submitted, proved all of the power companies' claims to be false, and they rejected smart meters. So the, the fact that the power company and the utilities and the commissioners are pushing it is because of money and political pressure. But the reason it's being pushed on the people is to surveil us, to control us like China. If you guys have any idea how extensive the surveillance and control, if you go on the wrong website or say the wrong thing on a social media site in China, you lose points. You can't get it on an airplane, you can't get on a train, you can't get a job, you can't get a loan, you can't rent a house. They have punitive ways. That's where we're going. What do you think opt-out fees are? Clearly punitive. To force you to submit to what they want. So that is their goal, is the spine. So what I want to share with you to show that this is true, that their end goal is an article just came out the other day from the Daily Mail is for about the UK, the United Kingdom. They are bragging now. See, first they force these on people and they lie. Like, this, like I said, Pacific Power doesn't have all these things in their meter right now. They don't have a hand device that hooks up to your home devices. They don't have anything in their digital meter right now that will invade on you, but they're upgradable to it. The future is they will change, even if they don't put RF in it, they'll still connect, they'll still surveil you, and they'll still benefit the government from that control. They can turn you off, they can see what you're doing, and then it gets into this. You say, well, how, in, how invasive can that control and what they're doing get? In, can, can it get? In the UK, they're now bragging, <laughs> dementia patients to be tracked by smart meters so that doctors can monitor any sudden changes that indicate illness, falls, or mental decline. The devices will track patients' daily routines, such as when they boil the kettle, cook dinner, or turn the washing machine on. You guys know that they can tell what devices you're using by their algorithms. They will flag up any sudden change in behavior which could indicate an illness, a fall, or a decline in their mental state. The meters will be able to send alerts to family members or, career or, or, care or carers who can pop around to check if the patient is alright. So anybody who thinks that these smart meters are not going to be used to constantly monitor everything you do and control you, they're, in the, they're just being blind because it's exactly where they're going. That's what they want. And we know that the social media and places where people go to sometimes try to find the truth, that the truth is being squashed. It's being censored right now very badly and they're getting away with it. So censorship, imagine if they know what television shows you're watching and what, now they already are caught, they already know we're, we're, I'm not using a VPN, a, a virtual private network, I'm not doing it, I should be. They know what I'm doing, they constantly, Google sells them the data, they know what, what sites I'm going on. But what happens when they have these e extra ways to control you where you can't get a job, if you, because now they're monitoring you at home, they know what you're doing. Or you can't get a job if you do this. You can't, get a, you can't go buy uh, groceries, or you can't get social security if you do this or don't do that, or we'll just shut your power off. Or they, can, they, they have ways and built into these things, they can, they can trip your, your TV off, they can turn your computer off, they can get inside your, your phone. So people say, oh well, no, we don't have that, Pacific Power said, we, don't, we didn't put that in our meters. It's a ruse, they're lying to you, they're hiding it, that is what they're going to do, but they're trying to make everybody feel, oh look how wonderful Pacific Power is. They're not doing that to us, which is a lie. And they're very sneaky and they just lie, Pacific Power is the biggest liars. Corey and that other lady that are running around, they're just, it's, it's sick. So, we talked a little bit about the, the fight that we have, that why Cindy and I and others now feel that our only way to win this is to sue the OPUC and to base it on our Fourth Amendment rights. Now, there's a catch in that. The Fourth Amendment says the government can't get our data. And they're saying, well, this is a private company, so they're playing games with us. No, oh, they can do it. No, no. We, we can agree to have a cell phone or don't have a cell phone. We are, the, the power company is a monopoly. And we did not agree to this. This was not in our contract, number one. Second, it's the government who's giving them the permission and giving them the authority so the government is imposing upon our Fourth Amendment rights. So there is a case here, no matter how they try and twist it, there's a case here on Fourth Amendment rights and to absolutely prove that these opt-out fees are targeted discrimination and that the, the commissioners broke the law 
by violating their own statutes, Oregon statutes that they are required to protect us and to base our to not let us get gouged and to cheated and to be charged things that aren't fair. That's actually in the law. It has to be fair. Well, how is this fair? You've got all these totals here, these numbers you're hiding, and you're just charging us because you want to target us and you're hiding the truth. So that's that's the basis of our of our legal battle we feel. So I talked about all that. Now let's talk a little bit about the opt-out fees and what our options are because a lot of people are concerned about this. If you had opted out before they took your analog meter, supposedly you could keep your analog meter. I just got an email from a uh, lady who got her, her meter changed even though she had opted out. She didn't put a sign on it. We tell everybody, put a sign out there. Put your information, your, your reference number, your opt-out information. She, they didn't have that out there. They went away from the home for a little bit, came back, they got a smart meter. Well, guess what? Even if they don't have to pay the 169, even if they are, they'll say, okay, we'll come back out, we'll put a digital meter on there. That person lost their analog meter, and now they're going to have a dirty electricity, fire risk meter that later will be upgraded to a full-blown surveillance. It isn't right now, but it will be upgraded <coughs> to a full-blown surveillance device. And also time of use. I didn't mention that one. Just got kicked in in California. They just started time of use. During the prime hours after you get home from work, got to get the kids ready, on to bed, cook, tripled the rates. So not only do smart meters never, ever save energy on the power grid, not only do they never save the customer's money, but these things give them the ability to watch what you do by the moment and to charge you now <coughs> at high rates during certain periods of time so the control is all about charging you extra money and trying to force you to change your habits. It's control. You can't turn the air conditioning off. It's 110 degrees outside. You've got to wash clothes right now. You don't have the choice to always adjust. But they're trying to force it, theoretically, to try and save a load on the power grid, which is a lie. It's actually a way for them to get rich off of gouging you when you can't adjust. They could be building new power plants. Instead, they're putting in smart meters that make the power grid more vulnerable. They can be hacked. An a, a EMP pulse would take out all the smart meters within all that whole area. It does not make our, our, our grid more secure. It makes it weaker and more at risk. So everything they're saying is a lie. So when it comes to opt-out, if you have your analog, hopefully you'll be able to keep it, but you've got to pay $36 a month. So here's where we're at right now. I'm going to just say this, and then we'll go to the Q&A. If people who already have opted out and are paying $36 a month or are getting ready to, if any of you are willing, and there's risk involved, I'm not going to, I have it, I can the email if you haven't already got it. There are risks, I'm not going to hide that. Because they claim if you don't pay that opt out fee, if I ask you, let's all band together, and I've got quite a few already doing this, that we're not, I'm not going to, I've got 75 year old women calling me and saying, I'm not going to pay that opt out fee for now, at least, just for a few months, just to stand up and make a point. Send a big message to them. We've got a whole bunch of people that are going to refuse to pay that fee. And if you shut off the power to that 75-year-old lady, we're all going to be there with picket signs. And we're going to pick it outside of Pacific Power and get on the news. We're going to raise hell. So that's the goal of our encouraging this. That people who, if you're willing to, to not pay that, and I've already had one person tonight tell me they're doing that. To not pay that $36 fee, even if you've already paid it. You stop now and you tell them I'm not paying this fee. And at some point, they already put it in writing that they will cut your power. But they'll always warn you a month in advance. They'll warn you two days in advance. So you'll have time to pay the fee and to, to get them to leave your power turned on. There is a slight risk they could pull your meter, but they won't. They have in the contract, if you don't pay, it's not a contract, we didn't sign it, but in their, in their information, if you, don't sign, if you don't pay the opt-out fee, you no longer are eligible for that program, so we can go ahead and put a smart meter on your own. Well, if they, if they accept your opt-out, at some point they're threatening you, they're going to cut your power, and you say, okay, I'll pay the fee, and it's been long enough, you get close enough to shut my power off, and you pay it. They're not going to take your analog meter, because that wouldn't be an opt-out. If they took your meter and put a, a computerized meter, a, I mean a, a smart meter on there, then you wouldn't have an opt-out. So we, we believe it would work, and that's what we're heading toward. We've got a number of people that won't pay the opt-out fees, Contact us, send us an email, write us, call us, let us know who you are, and we will stay very close in touch with you. If they start threatening you, I want to see the letters, give me copies. If they're going to cut your power, let us know. We are going to keep the, all of these people, we're going to band together, we're going to stand up to them. Now, Cindy and I are taking the next level, and some of you already know this. We are not going to pay the fee, period. I'm buying solar panels, and I can live... Yeah. I can live with very little power. I'll keep my computer, my internet going, and just a few LED light bulbs. 
they can't spy on me with the LED light bulbs when I'm on my own power system, only when they're hooked up to theirs. And they, are, they aren't spying with them yet. They can, I've been researching that recently. Eventually they will be able to use them for that, but right now they're not. But I can survive, I will make do. Is it a financial hardship? Yeah, but in a year or a year and a half, it's gonna, the, the lack of not paying the power company's $200 bill is gonna pay for it. So it's gonna end up paying, you know, paying itself off. But I'm doing it on principle. Cindy and I are doing it on principle. We will not pay the illegal extortion fee, period. And I will let them cut my power, and we will go on the news, and we will stand up and protest. And there are others that are saying they're going to do the same thing. But even if they don't, even if they pay the fee and, and back down, that's fine. If we have a lot of people that are not paying that fee for a short time, it can make a big, send them a big signal. And so that's kind of one of what we're asking people to do. So, okay. Now, we have a, a request by our videographer. He's not going to show your face. He's going to keep it focused on me. But if you don't want your voice being heard on the camera, then you need to speak up now. Otherwise, it will hear your voice, but there'll be no face on it. Okay, everybody seems all right, so you can go and keep on. Thank you, Kevin. And Kevin has been putting videos on YouTube, and even fixing ones that they did, but they left the audio off. So he's been doing a great job at putting everything that's going on about the smart meter fight on the web and on YouTube for us. So this, really, we appreciate his help on that very much. So thank you. Thank you. His, his YouTube um, name is Kevster, and if anybody uh, goes to my site, you link up to, to the YouTube videos, you'll see his, his site, and you can, um, you can subscribe to that. So, please, now, questions? You go ahead and start. Let me get the gentleman back here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something here for you, too. So, the, so the, all the bedrooms have been changed out now? They, they, I, I bought my house about a year ago, and it happens around that before we get and uh, I got the notice in the mail that they were going to be changing out the, the meter. Um, that that's all of all of Met Jackson County. That, I mean, everybody's been changed out. And um, what 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 meter is it that they that they put on our houses? Okay, so because you, you're telling me there was two there's di different there's, there's right. several different meters. Two two types that Pacific Power is using now. They have used different ones in the past. We can get into a long discussion about ones that were on your home that were a digital meter that didn't have any additional electronics. There's still a fire danger, but they literally just did a total. They, could, they didn't even have a daily or minute-by-minute -minute accumulation. It was just a total. Those are out there. They've been using those for a long time. And then they had some that were wake-up meters that just pulsed when you guy drove by and pushed a button. And then we found out, because I've got some next to me on a farm, they've been putting on ones that are transmitting RF pulses. That, that's the one they put but those they, on our homes here. In yeah, and I'll, and I'll get to that in a second. But they have had for quite some time ones that are transmitting RF every few seconds, 24 hours a day, and they never told anybody. That was done without disclosure. The new ones that they're putting on, the smart meters, if you did not opt out, the meter you got has an RF 910 megahertz, just like your cell phone, except it's a high-powered pulse, and they lie. They say that it only transmits a few minutes a day. They're adding up the micro-pulses. That's how they lie. They, w they don't want to admit that they are transmitting a high-powered pulse every, it could be every second on, on some grid configurations, or it could be every 30 or 40 seconds on a weaker grid. It has to do with the, with the smart grid. And, the, and, these, and these are the most dangerous? Yes. The ones, now, there are people who will tell you that the dirty electricity from a non-RF meter is actually the major cause of the harm that's going on, and they may be correct. Um, the, so there, there is a debate about that, but the smart meter that they're putting on has dirty electricity from the from the, the switching power supply. It has the dirty electricity from the actual RF pulses going over your wiring also. And so some are saying, well, when the RF got turned off, that it made it a, a small benefit, that the home still is getting the harmonics from the switching power supply. And so there are some problems with the meters, even when the RF's not in the meter. But the one they're putting on, to answer your question, the, me the meter they're putting on, if you didn't do anything, the full-blown smart meter, transmits RF all every few minutes, or every few seconds, 24 hours a day. But that's, Does that's not, what they have put on our own. That's what they put on your own. It's transmitted. The, the, you can, the you can, you can take a meter, the R, the R. Yeah, you can take an RF meter, and you can walk up within 10 feet of it, 6 feet, and it'll start every 10 to 20, 30 seconds. It's huge. You get a lot of small ones, then you get one big one. They don't have the hand device in there yet. Hand is home area network. It's in the 2.4 gigahertz range, just like your Wi-Fi at home. They didn't put that in there yet. 
So they can tell you, oh no, we didn't do that. We're not looking in your home and hooking up your cell phone and your smart TV. But next week they will. They're just, right now, they're, they're trying to, to sneak in the back door by not doing what some of the other power companies did by putting in those full invasive meters. And by the way, Ashland does have those. They're aligned to their people. So um, they, they do have some wake-up meters, but we've gone to their meters that have no, supposedly no RF, and they're putting out the 2.4 gigahertz. So if there's a combination of things that could happen worse in the future, what those meters could have, and some are even saying the PLC, the power line communication feature that can be switched on instead of the RF transmission, that those create more dirty electricity, and in the homes that have the harmonics problems, people get even sicker with the PLC than they do with the RF. So, the meter that they currently are putting out there does not have the hand, the 2.4 gigahertz on in, in it at all right now. The module's not there. So it's accumulation of your power reading, whether it does a full second by second continuous graph and then turns that in, or whether it's just doing an every 15 minute total. We still don't have the proof on that, but we do know based on these articles and what the companies are claiming that even if it's not on now, they have the time of use, they have the on-demand features, their switches, their soft switches, they can do them from the office. So we know they're capable of it and they are going to use it eventually. But right now, no, the one they're installing is not being used for full surveillance at this time, but it does have the RF transmitter on. Okay, somebody else right here. How do we, now we both, we offer, opt out a long time ago. I've been paying now for I think either four or five months. Yeah, well, everybody can hear you. You want to use the, you can. Okay. Well I I just want to find out how we can protect ourselves. We were one of the first ones that when we first went our mid first yes. meeting, yes. we opted out immediately. How do we protect ourselves from not letting them come on our property? Does uh, a no trespassing sign be sufficient, or do I have to put paddle locks on it, or how do I keep them from doing it? Okay, um, I just had to answer that question today. Um, yeah, you, you can give it to her, that's fine, because you you're on using it. Um, so what, what she's asking is, is uh, she, she opted out. We, we contacted her early on. And she opted out, she still has her analog meter, and she's wondering how can I protect that? Well, first of all, they have to come read it, and they do have easement rights. So this is one of the problems. Now, just to let you know, easement right laws do not allow them to put something in, to do something with that easement that would cause harm or danger to your property or your life. So they're breaking the law, but the easement rights give them access to that meter. They can cut your locks. They can get in there, they can, they can read your meter, and they also have in there that if you don't let them come read the meter, they're going to take away your right to the, um, to the analog. They're going to, they're, you're, you violated your contract, which is not a contract, we already talked about that, but they're going to say that you violated their rules, and so they're going to take your analog meter off and put a smart meter on there. So you have to let them have access to the meter to read it. Now, they're not going to change it if it's posted. If you have on there no smart meter and you have your reference number, posted right there, they will not take your analog meter, okay? The people that don't have it posted, they have. So your best way to protect yourself is the, 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 the you have those out there already, right? Right, Betty? You have those those two signs on your meter? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't put it on a meter. I put it on my fence. It goes okay, all it should the way be next to the meter, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's um, your best protection to not get your analog meter taken, is to put signs out there and let them have access to, to read the meter. Right, real quick, right here. Well, one more uh, Go question. Ahead. Go ahead. They have not been on my property for, I don't know, several years. Mm -hmm. Then they get it from out in the car mm -hmm. and just put however it is, they, they read it from outside. Uh, okay. They've never, never been on my property. She brought property. up a good point. Okay. And, I, and I'll answer all your questions, by the way. Um, we, got, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got we got we got 50 minutes before 7.30, I mean 40 minutes, so we got plenty of time. This, this, this is important because, remember I said they have been using different kinds of meters for years, like wake-up meters or RF 24-hour pulsing meters? You need to know what you have. You need to go look at it. If it's got a spinning wheel, we don't have any computerized analog meters here. They have analog meters with a spinning wheel. They have computerization in them, but they're not really in Oregon. They've been in different places around the country. We haven't seen any here yet. But you could have a meter that is transmitting RF already and you didn't go look, you didn't see that it wasn't a spinning wheel, that it had a digital display on it. If it's got a digital display, you don't have an analog meter. And so you should know that. Now, I believe you still have an analog meter. They can read it from across the, the, the fence, they can read it from a neighbor's fence, wherever they can see it. There's some way he's looking. If you have an analog meter, 
whether they're coming on your property or not, they are reading it. They're visually getting a, a, a camera shot of it from somewhere. Um, but if you, don't, if you don't have an analog, you need to go look. Uh, if you already have an RF meter or a, a digital meter of some kind, just write me. Send me a picture of it. Um, I know where you live. I can come over and look at it. But you do want to know because it is possible that you already have a meter that's transmitting RF all day long and you don't even know it. And you, you're paying an opt-out fee if you opted out and you don't even have an analog meter. So you've got to be careful about that. Okay, the lady over here, you had a, did you have a comment on what she was saying? Several things. <laughs> we're talking about, I have, I've been in the Valley for 50 years, and I've lots of lot of folks here, and to go from what we say to the old days, and where they read, just like this woman here, where they read, they've never entered the property on my partner and I's property here in Medford. Um, we've owned the property for going on three years now. They've never entered the property. So when I've been harassed, um, by probably six to seven different individuals now over the phone. You'll tell one person, I've opted out. Then a whole different organization will call. So I've had all these people try to worm in. I have gone from three foot fences to six foot fences. I have padlocks, I have security cameras, and I have a $2,000 watt water on the property now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not around with these people. And I, I have never felt, I mean, I've had a couple of guns in my face in my life. I've been robbed on I-5 corridor. I had uh, an armed gunman pull uh, uh, a 45 on me at my place of work about a year ago. So I've been in all these positions. But I honestly feel more attacked by Pacific Power and Light than I do any other one individual right now. Yeah, I agree with you. So these are just issues that are coming. I'll get you right in a second. I want to make sure I get you all. That it is an interesting that some people are saying, well, they're not getting in my property. I got, a, I got a big dog. I know they're not. But they can average it. They can actually say, well, they use this much the same every month for a long time. They can just start kind of averaging it. But eventually, they're going to come by and they're going to read it from across the fence or they're going to come on your property. And they have easement rights. And this is where you're going to get in trouble. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I want to fight, too, on that respect. I've got mine chained up right now, but they can cut it. That if you refuse them entry, you are... They have easement laws. The sheriff's not going to be on your side. The police are not going to be on your side. They do have easement rights, and they can go to the meter whether you like it or not. So that, that's, that's a battle we're not going to win. Um, and if you don't pay the opt-out fees, what are they going to do? They're going to come take the meter and turn your power off completely, which is what they're going to do to us. So they have that access right to come pull that meter. I can't stop them. Can you sue them? Yes, you can individually, and that's, that's the problem. Individual suits aren't winning. Okay, who had who their hand up? Let me get this gentleman here. A couple questions. First of all, uh, Pacific Power uh, claims that less than one percent of people are opting out. Do yeah. you have a different number? You know, he asked about the one percent fee. Every place we go, Pacific Power is still saying that, oh, it's only one percent of the people that are opting out. It's just a minuscule, un unimportant amount of people. We, you know, they're just the, the people that are stupid and they don't they don't um, they don't know what's going on. Well, we've gotten information. We don't have the numbers yet. I wish there was a way, and we're going to look into this. We've got insiders. We're trying to get information as to how, how many really have opted out because they're still using the 1% number in line. And we have, uh, we have information coming in from uh, people that are talking to uh, meter readers and other people that, that the numbers in Josephine County are very high. Since they got, word got out quicker there than it did here, you know, the activists, including myself, started going over there and spreading the word, and, and, and the county took action, and so it made everybody more aware. And that was great for them to do that, by the way. It's amazing what Josephine County is doing. Um, they're not fighting for us all the way. They're fighting for, the, for their right to rule, home rule. They're not fighting about these issues, by the way. But it still was very admirable what they're doing standing up. So we don't know what the opt-out numbers are. We believe they're much higher than what they're claiming. But to get that information, to find out how many and who these people are so we can band together and prove them liars. And no, you're, the resistance against you guys is way bigger, and they're getting hugely rich off of these extravagant, ridiculous fees. And even if they at some point say, okay, we ended up with 20% of the people statewide opting out, and they, but they finally admit it and they adjust the budget, well, now it's not $36 a month, it's only $15 a month like California, whatever. It's still illegal, it's still targeted, and here's what makes it so bad. They use those illegal fees to make people lay down and get that violation on their home. And that's what pisses me off. Because now we've got this huge number of people in our state that have had these things forced on their homes illegally because these illegal fees that they're using on people. So it really makes me angry. Please, the gentleman right here. Do you have one more? Well, well yeah. I just uh, read today about this fixed bill pilot. That's a joke. 200 was people that, to start Was that out. agreed to by the um, PUC? Not yet. It's proposed. 
Uh, 200 people, pilot program. They're going to read your meter three times a year. So now they're only going to charge you nine dollars a month. They're going to reduce the whippings down from 20, uh, 20, 20 whips a day down to five whips a day. Oh, thank you, Master, so much. Um, they are charging you an extra seven and a half percent fee for the privilege, and there's no reconciliation at the end of the year. You don't get any any money back if if your power usage was less. If it was more. We don't know yet what they'll do. If your power usage was higher than it was supposed to be, they could, they could kick, you, kick you off the program. There could be a clause in there. We haven't seen that yet. Like, it's just brand new. But at the end of that year, if you want to continue on the program, if you did use too much power, now they're going to base your new averaging on that new high power usage you're using. No reconciliation at the end of the year. Even if you cut your power usage down, it's not going to get re you're not going to get a new average till the next year and no confidence. It's a joke. It's a way to mess with people's heads and make them think they're doing something and they care about you and it's a total lie. Did you have one more or do I need to? Uh, well, I just wanted to, you know, it looks like that might, for most people, save them a little bit of money over the $36. Uh, not much. No. Yeah. 7.5% uh, on top of a $200 bill is $15 a month plus the $9. Right. Well, so I it's not saving much. Myself. If your bill's four hundred dollars a month, you're not saving a penny. Yeah, my, I figured out my bills for last year, uh, two hundred ten dollars a month a average. Yeah. So it works so out to twenty four seventy eight. You're getting, getting caught up in a corrupt program. So okay, yeah. I need to get this gentleman right here. Will the radio frequencies from the house is it put the smart meter affect neighboring houses or or like apartment complexes? Okay. Okay, so he's asking about, and believe me, I'll answer all your questions, as long as we have time. Um, he's asking about the RF pulses and how it affects people on the outside. And so this is really important. These, these antennas, because like I say, we can't win the legal battle on this, but I want you guys to know the truth about the RF harm. And I've, I've researched this deeply. I have a lot of uh, technical experience in my life. I'm a scientific glass blower. I know electronics and electricity. I can wire houses. I can take a car apart, motorcycle, computers. So it's, I can understand the stuff that I'm reading. And these antennas are directional. They, they focus away from, if they're, up, they're up against your home in the normal fashion, and the back side is toward your home and the front side is facing out, they, the majority of the pulse goes out away from your home. So how much harm is coming inside your home is argumentative, but we have children on the other side of the wall that instantly get nosebleeds and, and have serious health issues. So we do know there is a proximity issue even on the back side of the meter. I have a guy who just got wrote me today and he, he took my advice and he shielded this meter correctly. Don't just put a shield over your meter, it'll drive more harm into your home. So it'll save your neighbors and make you more sick. He did it correctly. He left the front side of the meter open but he shielded from the sides and the back to prevent the, it coming toward his home and he also put in some shunts and I'm trying to get some information on that from him. So in your home you are affected if the meter, like in, a, like in a mobile home park, if it's sitting five, four feet away from your home and pointing at you, then yes, the antenna is focusing the beam directly at you. And, if, and your neighbors, if, you're, if it's your smart meter is facing them, it is impacting them. This is where the variable part comes in. When that thing's pulsing inside that meter, your wiring is there. So some of that gets radiated over your home wiring. So your effect, by having the meter on your home, is probably making you more sick than the impulse going out toward your neighbors. But that's not always true. I'm saying that is a general rule. When it goes out of the meter toward people, once you get oh, more than 10 or 15 feet away, the power diminishes significantly. So if you're in a home, home developments where the houses are farther away than 5 or 10, 15, 20 feet, it, it, it is less harmful. So your neighbor has a smart meter, you don't, and theirs is pointing at you. It's, it's, it's low level in a in single instance. Now where, it gets, where that is not true is when you go inside, inside of a building where they have all the meters inside the building and they're all lined up, that's going to bounce all over the inside of that building and just be causing all kinds of harm. And, and in apartment buildings where they're on the outside, but our friend had an apartment up here on the second story, her bedroom, and there were smart meters, eight of them here and eight of them here, all bouncing around on the inside of that corridor, and it did make her sick. So. It does depend on the level of exposure, how much is going on, and so I hope that helps to answer it a little bit technically as to what, how the, the radiation and how it can, and in, in cities, like right now, we've got all these smart meters. They see bats going away, they see bugs going away, they, they see the, the, the plants around the meters dying, so 
the overall saturation, it's like everybody's got a cell phone, right? Well, now double that, even worse, because these are high-powered pulses, and put a smart meter, now you've doubled the radiation from that range of RF in the whole, in our whole area. And we leave, when we leave the city and go out to the country, Cindy gets better. So it is affecting a lot of people, they just don't know it. And by the way, we have chiropractors who are telling us the same thing. They have patients that when they leave the valley, they're, they're better when they come back, they get sick. So let me just tell them right here, and then I'll get you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, what about 5G? That they're putting in as well. It's all connected into the 5G. Yeah, 5G That's is another humongous problem. Yeah. So 5G is complicated. It's not what people the think. The smart grid is going to be able to hook in with it. It will. That's why they're so crazy it will. about it. 5G, people get confused about the RF frequencies on this. 5G is going to be using in about the 50 gigahertz range, which is a very short millimeter wave, but it also is going to be using the um, 910 megahertz. It'll also be using the two gigahertz that um, the what, what are these the, the ratings on the cell phones? It's it's it was the three and then the four and then it's well, what's that called? The, it's 5G. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. LTE. LTE. What's that? LTE. Yeah. The, uh, the words isn't coming to me. But when they went from the from the three to the four, they have new frequencies that came in there on the cell phones. So 5G is going to be using a lot of frequencies, including the Wi-Fi. 2.4 gigahertz. So when people say 5G, they don't always they don't they think well they can be misled and they're they're focusing on the 2.4 gigahertz of the 910. What 5G is doing is it's going to open up the door for that 60 gigahertz. So you've got 2.4 gigahertz on your uh, wi on your Wi-Fi at home, and now you're going to take that up to 60 gigahertz. The wave gets much smaller. So instead of now the, the 2.4 gigahertz um, Wi-Fi does impact your body pretty heavily. It, it is more dangerous than we thought. But the 5G, the, the, the 60, 50 to 60, by the way, 60 gigahertz is the weapon the military is using. Because this, the, the short millimeter waves, it's like the sun. You know how a, a shield can block the UV or the sunlight? So it's kind of similar. As you get up to those shorter waves, they can be blocked easier. That's why they're cutting the trees down and cutting the leaves off for the 5G, because it can't get through those. So the 50 gigahertz will stop at your body. It's only going to go in a shallow distance into your skin. So the impact on your body, the absorption into your red blood cells and your water and all these things, the way it disrupts your body is huge. So they're going to put the 5G in the cell phones. They're already talking about it all over the news. They're going to put 5G in these smart meters. So that's going to impact you severely at home. Go ahead. It's all about it's all that information going in the warp speed. Information transfer in the warp speed and it's all and, and this is all for the AI control grid. Yes, it's all to benefit them. It's not going so, to help us. So prepare to be ruled over by robots. They're, they're trying to tell you because you can download your videos exactly. faster, that you can download, that that's a great thing. Well, they're already plenty fast already. It's all about government control and speed because with these automated systems they're coming up with and ways that they can control some surveillance, they need more speed. One more thing? Yeah, the, the overarching thing is the rise of AI, artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. IoT, yeah, inter Internet of Things, all that. This, like, this is bad, yeah. but that's why they're so right. gung -ho Well, the smart meters are part of this, and that's what he's right. That it's bad. 5G is bad, and it's coming. It's already being installed. They're already putting the antennas in. And what's, what they're having is in certain areas of the world where they turn these things on, 200, 300 birds just die instantly in the area and fall to the ground. So we know that it has a serious effect on human physiology and, and living, including plants. We know 5G is bad, but it's the whole IoT, it's the Internet of Things, it's this whole push to all of this communication gear and everything that gives the government all of this power and ability. It's money and it's power. The, the communication, the telecommunications industry is six times larger than pharma. This is all about money and control and our government's owned by these people. So let me go to somebody else. Um, I, I said I'd go to the second one. Oh, because it, it's not a question. I just didn't know you or anyone else know I would. I would actually like to talk about this. We're not. We're not. We're not in favor of that. By the way, oh, you're not. no. And I will tell you why. Okay. Good. And you're That's welcome to do whatever you that. want. I'm not criticizing anybody. And <coughs> there is no harm in sending a. Um, what do they call it? the the yeah, N N O L notice of liability is the basis of the in power movement. They have great videos to help you wake up to the harm of smart meters. But what their what Josh Del Sol's program, what he suggested for a legal approach was to send them a document that said that 
you're liable. If you do this or that, I'm going to charge you a million dollars a day and blah, blah, blah. Well, they never signed that. And we know they, they force things on us with uninformed consent, by the, like the power company put on meter on and said they're going to do this without your signing and agreeing to it. But when you try and reverse that and you say that I'm going to send these representatives, the commissioners and the Pacific Power, and I'm going to put them in a position of liability. I can now go to court and sue them because I sent them these documents and they didn't respond. Every single court case has been thrown out. Yeah, you know they, why? They've lost. I do know. There's the bar. The what? The bar. The, the, le the, the, the legal bar? The bar, the, yes. Yes. That's the reason why. The, it's Crown Corporation in London. The bar. The, they will never take the power company down or the, or the PUC down based on your having sent them something and said that you're liable because you did this and that. It's not going to happen. And so what happened is over five, six years now, Josh Jill Soul's been pushing a program where people have gotten involved in it like a religion, and I could name names. These groups are jumping up, and they, they're charging these people for these notary fees, and they're sending these papers to the government, and they're not doing any other activism. They're not doing any grassroots efforts to do what we're doing here, and to talk to your commissioners and to your city people, and to write the commissioners. And I, That's where we want your help, by the way. What we want from you is to join up with us, and when, you, when it's needed, write a letter. Go to the commissioner's meetings if you can. <laughs> write the commissioner a letter. Join us in a protest. Those kind of things. We're not a group. We don't tell you what to do. If you want to send an NOL, it's not going to hurt anything. But if you realize that that's not going to end up in a win, after five or six years, he was on level three of level ten, the pressure from myself and others was so severe, and you'll find some outside comments about this that I learned about this from, from other activists around the country, that after all these years, the pressure was on them. You're only on level three of ten, and you had no wins, and this is ridiculous. So they totally took the whole website down, they redid it, and all that stuff is gone. So the Empower Movement has great information, but it's not a good legal approach to win this and to get smart meters removed from Oregon or to get off an analog meters back. I have uh, two meters on my property, and I called the uh, power company. He says, I want you to come out in two separate days, because I have opted out. Good for you. Says, come out in two separate days, I'm paying you twice. <laughs> you told me to pound sand. I like you. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, two questions. The first part is um, probably a quick, quick answer. Yeah. Um, can I get rid of my smart meter, and what can I do about my uh, exorbitant power bills? Okay. So... If you get rid of your smart meter, if you pay them the ridiculous extortion fee of $169 up front, they won't just bill you, you can get the smart meter taken off, they'll physically remove it, and they'll put a digital computerized meter on there. Like I said, there's no RF transmitter on it, but it still has a switching power supply and it still has a fire risk, and you have to pay the $36 a month, and at that point you could still refuse to pay it, you know, like we're asking people to do. But um, it may or may not have your bill be as high. This is one of the things that's hard to put our finger on. We seem to be seeing a much higher incident of smart meters having a higher power bill than these digital meters. So they do have different algorithms in them, and because it's not remotely accessible, they can't play with the algorithms, so they probably have it set to a more moderate range. But we don't know that for a fact. This is all just kept, you know, spe So I can call up and say, get rid of the sucker? Yes. Um, and I'll pay the $169 because I'm yes. paying that in one month more. Assuming your bill goes down afterwards, you could save that, recoup that money. But I can't guarantee it will go down. Yeah, okay. Um, and the other is more of a, a health issue. My meter is with a bunch of other meters. Mm -hmm. And it happens to be at the corner of my property, which is not, you know, it's just a city lot. So it's got like probably 12 meters, okay. none facing me physically, but what I worry about is, as you're saying, it's distance is better. Farther away from you are, but... Are the kids that sit on the... Right in front of them. Right in front oh, of yeah. them. That's bad. Um, mm -hmm. Because there's, a, it's like a, a table. It's yes. a, a telephone or a cable um, conduit place. Okay. Um, and it's like a, a magnet for these little kids. They come and they sit there and they put their toys on it. They hang out there for hours. Do you know about the uh, fight that's going on to get the Wi-Fi pulled out of the schools because of the harm that's causing children? Yeah, that's going on all over the country also. Um, having children being around these smart meters is, is 
really, really, really bad because their brains have more liquid, their skulls are thinner, and the absorption rate has been shown to be much deeper into their brains. And the, these RF uh, pulses do cause neurological harm. So you have many toxins in our environment. I watch what I say. I'm not going to talk about certain subjects here today. But we have toxins and things that are causing kids severe harm and autism, and you put on top of that the RF harm. This lady up north that has an autistic five-year-old daughter called me. She had removed all of the RF, micro, the, the microwave, which are, by the way, leak like crazy and they're terrible. So don't use your microwaves. Get, get rid of them. Stay far away from them if you're going to use them. She took off that. She took off the Wi-Fi. She got every single TV, every device that had an RF, Wi-Fi, got them all off. Her grumpy, difficult, autistic daughter turned into an agreeable, happy, and said, Mommy, I feel so much better. So we know that this is impactful. So you getting it off of your home, if you have the money and the drive to say, I don't want those RF pulses going over my wiring into my home, and if i got to pay extra for it, I respect that. Because medical bills and health harm, money doesn't compare to that. So I don't care if you're 36 bucks a month and never stand up and don't pay it. I, I'm totally in favor of anybody paying that 169 and getting that harmful thing off. Now, as far as people being around them, yes, you need to be aware that, especially when you're near those meters, Josh Hart of StopSmartMeters.org in California started this fight years ago with other people. In going around and helping people and reading their meters, he finally passed the tipping point and got harmed bad and had to move out to the country a year and a half before he finally started to get better from being away from So it. I have no recourse as far as the, you know, when you, when you call them up and you say, how can I, one person in my home, use almost twice as much energy right. for the same temperature over the same period of time? Yeah. No, you don't last have any. year there was five people yeah. in my house. You don't have recourse. We have, we have, the story you're telling is going on all over the country. People are saying, I have not changed my power usage at all, but my bill doubled or tripled. So we have no recourse. They're not reducing the bills. Um, my bill has gone up 40 bucks. I, I have a small place. It's yeah, it's one way out. So there's and, no. Th and my bill was like $30 a month when I first moved in there. I have not changed my, my usage, and my bill has gone up now, tremendously. It does get complicated as to what other factors can cause your bill to go up that the analog meter didn't see. There are some justifications for what they're saying, but it's not really a justification. The, the meters are, are cheaters, is what I believe, and there's no recourse. You're not going to win. We've had case people tell us they lose in court every time. You're not going to win. That's why, you got, that's why we want analog meters. And by the way, you can buy an analog meter and have it installed behind on the, on the other side of their, of, their, of their computerized meter and you can do your own mechanical reading and then you can just prove that they're wrong. So people that have money and want to do that, you can. But you're still, you would only do that, I would think, if you got the smart meter off and got a digital meter on there because you're not going to want to have a smart meter if you're going to spend that kind of money anyway. So it's, an analog that it's the analog that you want. The power that's being used by those meters is being paid by you. Not yes, it is. Them. Yes, it is. And powered the by the meter. And the different uh, amounts of pulses are given off for using more power. Then when, you're in the, when you're the higher part of the smart grid where they're pulsing all the time, that, yep. that power is being yep. paid and for by you. Your opt out fee okay. may be cheaper than paying for the extra power. Motors <laughs> that spike, <laughs> you have, only if you keep your analog. Once you That's lose it. your analog, exactly. that may not be the case. Yeah. Motors that spike, yeah. dirty electricity from fluorescent lights and from LED lights, things like this, they cause these smart meters, these digital meters, to misread. Yeah. They're actually saying you're using power, you're not. So it's a real problem, but the digital meter may or may not fix that. I've got a lady who's been very patient. She's got the mic. Hi. I've been in my home over 28 years. I've had six-foot chain link completely surrounding my property for 28 years. I have two lock gates and a pack of German Shepherd dogs. I have not had a meter reader on my property in I don't know how many years. Uh, so they're, I don't know, maybe they're using um, binoculars to look at the meter, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, they could be. But I don't know how they're reading my meter because they don't even ask, these last 10, 15 years, they don't even ask to come read the meter. The second thing is when they sent me the notice that they were going to do the smart meter, and I called them and said no, and they sent me another notice that they were going to do the meter, I said no. The day that they came around, I'm in a cheap, junky, white city neighborhood, um, I had already called two or three times and said no smart meter. They attempted to put one on my house and they left me their nice little dirty notice that my whole neighborhood had got their smart meter, but because I had locked gates, they couldn't get in to put them on. So just call them back and set up a time. 
after I'd already called them two or three times and told them I didn't want one, right. had I not had six foot chain link lock gates and German Shepherd dogs, I would have got a smart meter. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of but people. How are they reading my, they my meter all these scopes. years then? That's a good question. They have spotting scopes. They do. They have spotting scopes. He's right. Quarter okay, so I had more questions. I want to make sure I get everybody. Left lady right here. And okay, um, you mentioned earlier that uh, a lot of smart meters had exploded yes. and killed people. Yes. Were there any unusual circumstances or did they just blow up? I mean, Both. Um, a truck hit a pole and 500 smart meters exploded. Uh, it obviously caused a you know power surge over the wires. Um, they're not designed to handle the power surge. The old the analog meters are. They won't catch on fire. They never did. These just can't handle that, and they just um, blow up. But there's other cases where they just an individual meter just fails internally, or it, when it's installed, they can create a hot socket problem. The installers can, so that does happen. But it's also internal that they they catch on fire. And there is no rhyme or reason. It can be um, a power spike. It can be a failure just internally, like computers do. And so there's multiple reasons why they catch on fire. They, they do a combination of things. If you've ever seen a, an electrical fire where there's unlimited power coming in, there's no circuit breaker on the power coming into these things. And when you see it, it's like when these transformers explode. There's no way for them to stop the power. So they, the, the, the arcing is super high intensity, you know, and, and it's just blap, and this, the meters are just sparking and going like crazy. So it's serious to have a meter that has no breaker in front of it to stop it when, it, when something goes wrong, then it just keeps, it keeps arcing until it just melts the whole side of the house and catches it on fire. So, yeah, it's serious. Um, we had one more on the side of the I thought I saw. Yeah. Yes. Um, I opted out and they sent me a letter saying, we understand and uh, you're going to have to pay a smart meter. Right. I had to call every day and ask for a supervisor and say, get out here, I want my analog one back. Did you get it? No, they put in the, the digital, the digital meter. Right, and it still has on there, delete, record, you know. There were a few people who filed suit or did do something where they got their analog meter back, but very few. Most people, that's exactly what they're going to tell you is, we are not giving you an analog meter back. They also lie about that, by the way. They say, oh, they're not available anymore. The companies are only making computerized digital meters. Well, the lie is, it's because they're not ordering them. <laughs> the companies would be glad to make the old-fashioned analog meters again if the companies would order them, but they're not because they want these computerized meters so on your home. did they, I heard something about they weren't going to charge the 36 until the end of January. $36 fee is, is, um, is forever on the Pacific Power Plan in California. The lawsuit that got the analog meters back also got a three-year limit. So you'd pay $10 a month for three years, and then you're done. So uh, no, here, there is no limit. $36 a month, flat one. And they may change that and lower it if we have enough opt-outs in the state. But the point is that opt-out fee, that meter reader fee that's illegal because it costs more to report your power with a smart meter, they're going to keep pushing that indefinitely at this point. Well, I finally got a hold of somebody that said uh, they did give me a $100 credit because it was their fault for coming out and yeah you just, now you have a computer on your now you have a computer on the side I mean, of your it's just like so yeah. so uh, it makes me angry okay we have a lady right here i'd like to get to can, can you get her the mic Cindy? Uh, that they sold that they sold the old uh, make it easier for her i don't want her to have to talk about to, to other states uh, and or the, other countries the analog meters yeah. yeah, yeah, they may be. We've actually got evidence that they're not destroying them. They're actually putting them into the refurbished market because California, New Mexico, and other states are still using analogs. And so they're refurbishing them. So there are a whole bunch of refurbished analog meters available. So Pacific Power is lying there. And they're saying, well, there's no companies making them. It's because they're not ordering them. I've got to get to somebody else real quick. We've got one, this gentleman right here. Okay. Um, First one is a question. Okay. You mentioned a reference number. Yes. Call up Pacific call, Power. Call, if call you, Pacific if, Power. If you opted out, call them up and ask for your reference, your opt-out reference number. Then on, on our website, on nosmartmeter.org, and by the way, we do have, if you want to help us financially, we have signs for $15 with sticks. We have signs without sticks for $10. You can just do a donation. Um, the On the right side of our website, toward the bottom, there's two documents. One is a sign that says no smart meter, and the other one is where you put your account number, your opt-out number, your reference number, and then if that's right there, they won't change it. But if that's not there, they say, oh, we didn't have you on our list, and they'll do it. Oh, it's like they'll send you a letter and still come out and do it. 
<laughs> if you don't have it posted, they will. You had one other another thought too? Okay, something I'd like to have you either confirm or deny, and I heard this from an installer who installed a smart meter on my neighbor's house. And he said, and, and I live in an area where the houses are hundreds of feet, in some cases thousands of feet apart. Okay. And he said that because Pacific Power doesn't have enough receivers, as he put it, Okay, you're getting that to another the, area. Yeah, I know the, about that. That the, the readings, the signals are actually bouncing from meter to meter. His, his meter to another meter to another meter to another meter. And they do that whether you're in the country or not, by the way. It's called their grid. So they'll have all the meters. Are that's why they transmit so often, by the way. Um, it's not always transmitting <coughs> to the main 9, 10 megahertz that goes back to their, to their, um, to their office. The... Uh, the, the grid is, a, I don't know why they did this, but this is their thinking. The, the antenna, that's, they're going to putting antennas all over town, you know, that every 500 feet, they're putting through 5G in and all that. But in the way it was, is you've got this big tower over here and that one over there, and I don't know how in the world it, it wouldn't be able to talk to them because our cell phones do, but they're in this <coughs> grid. Now, there's more to it. There's actually a secret reason behind the grid issue, but they actually, all of them, talk to each other, whether you're in the country or not. And their reasoning is that, well, your home can't reach the tower, so we pass it all along, and then we get to a home that's close enough, and then theirs is transmitting all the time. Theirs is really active, because it's getting all that information and transmitting it to the main office all the time. So the other part that now you made me think of when you said this was, that right now what's going on, and this is the part of the corruption of Pacific Power. If you live out in the country, and your signal cannot be received by an antenna, they're going to have to come out and do manual reads on your smart meter. They're not going to charge you the 36 bucks a month, but you're still stuck with your smart meter. They aren't coming out and putting on a digital meter or an analog. They're, they're not offering that. They're just saying, no, we'll just come out and read it. We won't charge it 36 bucks. So they're putting the transmitters on homes that are not even benefiting. They can't even get the information even turned in. Did, you have, is that, did that answer your question, by the way? About yes. The, about why they're, yeah, they are talking to each other. They absolutely so, are. So the, these, these transmitters that receive, or the receivers that are receiving this information, mm -hmm. where does that information? information then get transmitted to? Is it going up to a, a cell phone tower? Is it going up to a satellite? Um, the cell phone tower. Cell phone tower. It's going through the cell system. So the And then from there it could go fiber optic, but yes, it's going back to the office. So so, so so the cell tower operators and owners are getting their... Telecommunications bucks. Part of the, Everybody's part getting of the, a piece part of it. Part of the, uh, the pie right. too. So I want to see if I got anybody I didn't get yet. I had people I had their hands up that I wasn't able to get to. A gentleman back here. Make sure I get everybody, and then we'll get this gentleman over there. Cindy, we'll get back to her, yeah. Get the guy over there with yeah, the beard. Two questions. Is it possible that off that piece could be a write-off? <laughs> well, if, if your power bill's not a write-off, then it wouldn't be. But if your power bill's a write-off, then it would be. That's just, that's just my, my, that's my legal understanding. That question hasn't come up before, but I do understand legal things. And so if your, your tax structure is such that your power bill can be deducted, then the opt-out fee can, but um, it's not something that would fall into any special categories outside as a health, health. As a health. You're right, right. We have a gentleman over here. There's one more. Okay, go ahead. Um, what about in Josephine County where, where we have this? Uh, the or the ordinance? What about not paying or paying? We have in, a different okay, Josephine here. County and the ordinance, and then we'll get to you, sir. Okay. Josephine County did an ordinance that says you can't charge opt-out fees and you have to give people an, an analog meter if they want it. They were taken to court by the PUC. The PUC has the legal right to tell the Attorney General who they want to sue. The Attorney General has to do it. They're now suing Josephine County. The Association of Oregon Counties, the AOC, their attorney has been given the right to assist in that legal case. So now he's working with Wally Hicks in that legal case. They're defending home rule. They're not defending the RF harm or the Fourth Amendment rights or the lying of the, of the opt-out fees. But if they win, Josephine County's ordinance becomes effective. Right now, because the case is in mitigation in the courts, my understanding is, from what I've been told, that the case, right now it is not enacted. Even though it was supposed to be at the end of January, it's not in power. And if you don't pay your fees, Pacific Power is going to treat you the same as they will. Anybody else, they're going to, if you don't pay the opt-out fee, they're going to threaten you just like they are going to threaten me. I, by the way, January, we just got our first opt-out fee. I didn't pay it. So it's going to take two or three months before they're going to start threatening me and cut my power. So the same thing is true there. They're going to threaten you, without a doubt, unless Josephine County wins. And then other counties and cities would be able to do similar ordinances that they wanted to. The precedent would be set. But it wouldn't affect other counties or any other cities unless their, their people, their commissioners or councilmen, do something 
the, that, that wind would not affect anybody else. It would only help the Josephine County non-incorporated areas, and you know that. So um, right now, I would not say that you are, that that ordinance is helping Josephine County at all. I hope they win. I hope it does. But right now, it's not in, 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 in effect. Thank you. Go ahead and give that to him, Cindy. Yeah. How are people? How are people fighting back against this this program? Because when you sign up for the opt out and you pay the opt out fee, you're going with the program. You're not fighting back. I agree with you. I agree. When you um, when you sign up to pay the opt out, when you sign up, when you opt out. And then you do not pay the opt-out fee. You kind of agreed to go with their program, but then you're not paying for it. Right. That's not fighting back either. Well, it was in our case, and I'll tell you why. Why did we tell everybody to opt out? We had this debate right from the beginning. <laughs> we got involved in this. If you don't opt out, if you say oh, I'm not going to agree to this, I just I'm not going to opt out. I'm, I'm just telling you you can't do it. What they do is when you're not home, they come change you. They take your analog meter. So instantly you've lost. Now you're getting sick. You're being surveilled. And you're like, darn it, they took my analog meter, even though I told them no, I wasn't going to pay their opt-out piece, and I wasn't going to go along with their program, it's, I'm not agreeing to that new contractual, you know, thing that you're throwing at me, and they got their meter taken. So the reason we tell people to opt out is to save their analog meter for as long as they can, so they don't get sick. So my number one concern is about your health. I love you. I don't want you getting sick. I don't want you having that smart meter on your home. So even though you have to pay 36 bucks a month and play their game, it's worth it to not get harmed physically. So I agree with you. It is, but you got to realize with the monopoly and with government, if you don't pay your, your registration fees for your car, they'll, they'll, they'll arrest you or take your car away from you. So there are a lot of extortion type fees that aren't right, but you have no choice. In this case, we're trying to protect your health. Now, by not paying the fee, once, if you still have an analog meter and you don't pay the fee, you are putting that at risk. That is true. And that's the, what people have to decide individually with what we're asking them to do, to not pay it for some time. But am I breaking a contract? I never really signed anything. I just called them up and I said, I don't want that meter. And they said, well, you know you're going to have to pay 36 bucks a month. And I didn't agree to it. I said, I'm aware. I'm aware that you're threatening me with that. But I never agreed. So I kind of see what you're saying. But I want people to keep their analog meter. That's kind of too late. Joseph Jackson County's already been run through. Right. You can't even get an analog meter back. So right. the only reason for opting out now and to play their game is to get that RF meter off your home if you believe it's causing you harm or others harm and you want it off there. And yes, they're, they're, you're basically saying, I'll pay your extortion fee. It's not right. It's not fair. So what's, what, where's your priority? If you can keep an analog, that's our priority, and that, no matter what. Still take it. Yeah. Okay, we have this lady here. Gotta, okay, I saw, I saw a YouTube video mm -hmm. on building a little Faraday case completely around Don't do it. it. Don't do it. You, may, you didn't catch that when I said it earlier. Don't do it. This is really, really important, okay? And I've already thrown this at, at activists around the country, and they agree with me. They said, why didn't we think about that? If you put a cage over the meter, it not only will reflect, even an absorbing cage can still reflect more harm into your home, but it turns the meter up. The meters are variable power. Just like even, your cell phone. Even with screen? Yeah. Yeah. The, just like your cell phone. If it had, it, 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 the, they talk to each other and they say, are you hearing me? Yeah. If it's not hearing it good enough, it cranks the power way up. That's definitely going to drive more harm into your homes. You never want to cover the meter. You, there are some people that have done some meter shields like this with an open front. And then they shield the back side of the meter on the inside of the home or behind it to prevent the stuff from radiating into their home. So you, once you, it's a little bit complicated, but trust me, do not put one of these things that you can buy over the outside of your meter. You will be sorry. This lady right here. Is there here. information on your site about that? I, I don't have a smart meter, but my neighbors do, and they're pointing towards That mic is business. making a whistle, whoever's got it. Cindy, that's all right. Because you're fine, you're fine. I'll just turn it down instead. So is there information on how to protect that, that neighbors from coming in? Oh, yeah, she's saying the neighbors stuff. Uh, we have some people that have put shields all along their fencing or put up big shields to stop that print, that the radiation from the neighbor's meter going towards your home. So you can do some things like that, yes. I had one more back there real quick. What, what, is, what are you using to shield that stuff? Um, you don't want to ever use a solid sheet. Thank you for asking. You guys got good questions. Never use a solid sheet. That's the worst thing. 
And even if you're trying to shield it from a neighbor, you can use metal roofing and solid shielding, but just always think about the fact that it's going to reflect. So what if your signals, like you put a solid sheet on the side of your home, and now you're in your house, and your Wi-Fi or your cell phone is reflecting off of that and coming back at you. So never use, it's just a general rule, don't use solid sheeting, except in rare cases. Like the one guy, he had, the what meter was... What, 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 what I will, I will, I will tell you. So one guy had his meter way far away, but he wanted to stop that from radiating toward his house. He put roofing shielding out there. It wasn't close to his home, so the reflection issue wasn't going to cause more problems with him. The, the shielding that works the best is very small. It's micro that you, don't, you can't find easily. It's expensive. So here's what worked. You know your aluminum screen door material you can get really cheap in big rolls? Fold it over. That's all you got to do. And yeah, it, it, takes, it, 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 it knocks it down to about 80 to 90% reduction. Wow. Ground it. It needs to be an absorption shield. It has to be grounded. And then the signals that hit that will be absorbed into the screen. So there are multiple things you can do with that on the inside of your house, or if you have neighbors, like an apartment building, you can run that stuff all over the outside of your wall and ground it. There are some things like that that will help. So it's taking a screen material, folding it in half, so now the combination creates a really good blocking, a very high high level. Make sure it's not nylon. No, no nylon. It's got to be the aluminum. Thank you for pointing that out. Who has, who appointed, who gave authority to the PUC? Oh, thank you. Didn't I already mention that? Yeah, who gave our governor it? appointed our commissioners. They are shills. They do the bidding of the corporation. They are not elected like New Mexico. And if we want to do so, bills... So and who did it? Kate Brown? She did when she was appointed? That's when she did it? She appointed them. Like she, when, remember when that uh, grasshopper or whatever, the last guy? What's his name? I don't remember his name, but so, there it's off, it's off. Just go, yeah. Anyways, when he got when he got when he got in trouble and got kicked out, yeah. was it when she oh. well actually I know they've replaced one or two commissioners, commissioners since she became governor, so one or two of them could have been appointed by the previous governor, but the point is they're appointed by the governor. So, and that should not be happening. They should yeah, be elected. So this was team. appointed in what year? What's that? What year was it appointed, this PUC thing? When no, no, it's PUC individual. They, they, could, they could take one individual out and put another one in. No, it's 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 gradual. They, they change. They change occasionally. She's Just appointed one. two out of the three in the last. Four, okay, that's four what years. I thought. Yeah. So, so, okay. so, so there's like a general over the PUC or something. There's a governor under. No, the our governor, governor Kate Brown. The governor, they, they are under she, the governor's control. She has absolute say on who is on that commission. She can kick one out and put another one in. But just so let's say you win one of them over, so just fire them and she'll put another one in there. But one more thought, because we're out of time. No, I did not get a question from her. I'm um, just curious. I opted out, and I made sure I got the job number and everything, and I had it posted. And when they did, they came in and I don't know, did our whole neighborhood in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So I still have my analog, but do I need to keep that sign out there? Yes, yes. I've had people who months later, uh, Clara still came around and changed it. So, oh. yeah, you got to be on. It's got to be vigilant. You got to stay with it. It's really sad that it's this way. It's like we're living in a totalitarian state. We actually are. We're becoming like China. And people have been warning us. I've never been politically active. We've been warned about these things for years, that they've been doing things to take our rights away from us. And we, many of us, like myself, didn't stand up. So now we're up against the wall. There are still chances to win. We abolished slavery. They're saying, well, there's 50% of the population in the U.S. has these now, and they're rolling them out into Oregon like crazy. We can, how could we win this? It's already too late. Slavery was very well established, and a civil war stopped that. So there's always hope. So I really thank you all very much for being here. I hope you email me or go to the website, connect with us somehow, and join us in any way you can to help with this fight because it's worth it's a fight worth winning. When they're forcing a computer on your home under their control and you're not allowed to touch it, and if it isn't bad enough what they're putting in it already, I guarantee you what's coming down the pike is going to be way worse. We need to stand up. So thank you for being here. I appreciate all your participation and your questions. And let's just stand together as a community. We're going to keep having more of these and we're just going to keep growing. So thank you very much.